Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that dispersion or explosion effect in Photoshop. Now there are a specific set of brushes you need to do this effect. They're brushes I created myself. You could download them for free. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website where you could download those brushes. You'll also be able to download this image so you'll be able to practice on this image at home. Also, I'll have PDF outlines on how to install the brushes and how to do this effect. I already have the brushes installed in Photoshop. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but again, if you go to my website, you'll see instructions there on how to install the brushes. Now, let's do this dispersion effect. After you open an image up into Photoshop, what you do need to do is select the subject. There's a number of different ways you could do that in Photoshop. If you have the contextual taskbar handy, you could click on select subject there, or you could just go up to select, then down to subject. It will take Photoshop a second, but it should roughly find the subject of the photo. And in this case, you could see that it has marching dance going around Courtney, it found her. But we need to refine the selection. To do that, go up to select, and then down to select and mask. The first thing you should do when you have the select and mask dialog box open is pick the view you want to use. I like to use either a black background or an overlay background, which happens to be red. If you go to the view drop down, you can see that there's black and there's overlay. Those are the two that I most often use. I'll use black and I'll have opacity at 100%. Now, as I look at it, it's a pretty good selection. What I always do, though, when I do a selection of a person is after I choose my view, I'll go up and I'll click the Refine Hair uh, button. And you can see it refined her hair a little bit. Then what I'll do is I'll go and click this little checkbox, Decontaminate Colors, and that often refines the hair as well. But it still isn't perfect. I could see a little bit of the white background through her hair right on the edges. So what I'll do is I'll get the second tool from the top. This is the Refine Edge Brush. The keyboard shortcut for this brush is the R key. And then what I'll do is I'll just take this brush and I could resize it with the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. And I'll just brush on the edges of the hair that I think need improvement. Like there, over in here, and over in here. Maybe just at the very top right up in there. And that looks pretty good. So you can see it is a much better selection now. Now that I'm done with my selection, I'll go over on the far right and output to, I want to output it to a new layer and then click OK. Now I'll have two layers in the layers panel. I have the original background layer that is automatically turned off. We're going to leave that off. And then we have the clipped out image of Courtney and you can see she's clipped out. We need to duplicate this layer. If you, had a, if you have a Mac, hit Command J. If you have a PC, hit Control J, and you'll have a duplicate of that layer. Now we need to actually add our own background to this image. To do that, click on the background layer, leave it off. So don't turn it on, just leave it off. Click on that background layer and add a blank layer by clicking on this little plus sign in the lower right. And what will happen is a blank layer will be added in the middle. Now with this blank layer, you could put any color you want in there. To do that, go up to Edit, down to Fill, then go to this drop down, and you could pick a color, or you could do black, or you could do white, you could do 50% gray. I'm going to do black. I'm just going to have a black background and click OK. Now you'll see that we have Courtney in front of a black background. Now what we need to do is turn off the top layer, just click on that eyeball to turn it off and click on the layer directly below it. It's called Background Copy. You could rename these two if you want, uh, but I typically don't. So I'll be on this layer now. The top layer is turned off. What I need to do is I need to distort this layer so that when I add the dispersion effect, something is there to be added, meaning over in this area over here that's now black, I need to put some of her face over there so that when I add the distortion effect with the distortion effect brushes, you'll see something there. Now to do that, we're going to go up to filter and down to liquify. When you do that, the entire image will open up in this 
liquify dialog box. What we want to do is use the very top tool. This is called the forward warp tool. You can see the keyboard shortcut is W. What we're going to do is we're going to get a slightly larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. Of course, the left bracket key will make it smaller. The larger brush is better to use typically. And what we're going to do is we're just really going to distort her head over here on the right hand side because that's the side we're going to work on by just stretching everything out. I don't want to stretch her eye too much because just from past experience, if I have her eye stretched out too much, it just doesn't look right. So we're going to stretch it right to the edge and we'll do the sweater down here as well. So like that. And that looks pretty good. When you're happy with what you did, click OK. All right, so now we have this um, liquefied layer right here. What we need to do is put a mask on it. But if I just go down here and click on the mask icon, it's going to put a white mask. I want to put a black mask. Now, I could put a white mask on it, then invert the mask. A faster way, though, is just hold in the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have PC option, if you have a Mac, and click on that mask with that key pressed in, and you'll get that black mask. And you can see it's totally hiding that layer. That's great. Now, turn on the top layer and click on that top layer. Now let's add a regular mask to this layer. Just click on the mask icon. So we have now a white mask on that layer. Now we're ready to do this dispersion effect with the dispersion brushes. Now I mentioned that you could download these brushes for free from my website. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website so you could get them. You also get this image so you can practice at home and some by and some step-by-step -step PDFs. Now, the brushes, get the brush tool, hit the B key on your keyboard, or you could just click on the brush right here. Go down to the brush preset picker by clicking on that little download or little downward facing arrow there, and then scroll to the bottom. And when you install the brushes, they'll be down here. There's five different brushes. And if you click on a brush, you could kind of hover out over the image and see what that brush looks like. So I kind of like this brush to start. It's called Morganti EB Brush-3 or EB-3, I should say. I called them exploding brushes when I, when I created them. So I have this exploding brush. Close this down. What I recommend you do is you open up the brush attributes panel. To do that, hit the F five key and you'll see the brush attributes panels over here. And mainly what you want to do here is you could affect the size with this slider. You could also affect the size with the bracket keys, left bracket key smaller, right bracket key larger. Or more importantly, what you're going to do is affect the angle of the brush with this little circle. And I want to kind of bite into her hair. Now you'll notice I'm on a white mask. Make sure you're clicked on the mask, by the way, and not on the actual image. We need to affect the mask, not the image. So make sure you're clicked on the mask. It's important. You need to paint in the opposite color of the mask. If you look at the swatches, you'll notice the foreground swatch is white. So if I click, nothing's going to happen because I'm painting white on white. I need to make this black. Just hit the X key and you'll flip flop those two swatches. Now I'll come in with your brush and you could see you could come in and start to take away some of this area of her face. So we're kind of dis kind of exploding. We're doing the, the uh, dispersion effect as they say. So when you're happy with it, you're done Just stop. And now we're going to do the dispersion effect to the background. So we need to click on the black mask. This is the mask that's on the second layer from the top. We need to get a brush for that. I'm going to get a different brush for this. I think I'll get this brush right here, right? I'm going to open up the brush attributes panel by hitting the F5 key. And then I'm going to come in. I think I'm going to flip this one all the way around. And then I need to get a larger brush. I'll hit the right bracket key to get a larger brush. And if you start to notice, you might find, let me do this. See how it just kind of eventually disappears? Well, that's because the brush is too big for the size of the image. You can make the image smaller by hitting Command or Control minus. And when you do that, your brush will appear. And then you could come in and you see I clicked and nothing happened. That's because I'm on a black mask and I'm painting in black. So I need to flip plop these swatches. I'll hit the X key. Then I'll come in here and do that. Now you can see that 
It looks a lot better. Kind of like that. This. Like that. Now, close this down, fit this to screen by hitting command or control zero, and then you could see there's the dispersion effect. It's as easy as that. Now, if for some reason you don't like what you did here, well, it's very easy to kind of undo what you did. What you can, let's say you liked what you did to her face with the white mask, but you don't like what you did with the black mask. Well, click on that black mask, then go over here and look at your swatches. Notice the black swatch is the background swatch. You could just fill this entire mask with that background swatch color, it happens to be black, by hitting Command Delete on a Mac, Control Backspace on a PC. And by the way, on my website, I also have a free list of Photoshop keyboard shortcuts, and you will could discover all these different shortcuts I use in Photoshop. Now you see I pretty much undid what I what I just did by just filling this entire mask with black. So I could come in, make this a little smaller. I could come in and get my brush again. And I have to get my brush attributes and make it a little smaller, maybe just a little bigger. And then I could come in and try to do this a little better. Oops. Like this maybe. Mm -hmm. like that so there is that and there is the dispersion effect in photoshop hopefully this gives you an idea of how it's done and then you could practice with it and hopefully do a better job than i did again everything's available for free in the description below this uh, video just find the link to my website and you could download everything and work at home Thanks everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.